In this video, I'm going to share five important things you need to do before you start your nonprofit. Let's get into it. Hey there, my name is Tiffany with Boston A Budget. I help people get started with their nonprofits and also raise money from the ground up. If you know you need help starting a nonprofit, make sure you are subscribed to this channel and also make sure you sign up to join my Purpose Profit Society. And it's an accountability community where I help encourage you and also teach and train you along your nonprofit startup journey. If you're interested in joining, you can click the link below. I'm going to share with you five things you need to think about before you start your nonprofit. Number five is one of the most important, so I want to make sure you stay to the end. But I also want to share that sometimes you got to look at this both ways. When you're starting a nonprofit, you need to think strategically, like how you want to plan and how you want to make the right moves to help you grow. But you also need to think practically. So what are like the very practical things that you just need to do to be prepared for your nonprofit? So this video is not necessarily about strategy. It's more so about the practical things you need to do to get yourself set up. I'm all about preparing you. There are other videos that I have. I'm linking one above to help you think about the things you need to do before you start. But this video is all about the practical stuff. So here's the first thing you need to do. You need to pick a name. Now this seems super simple, but I'm saying this for a reason. Your name of your nonprofit is your brand. It's how you're presented to your external partners. It's how people remember you. It's how people refer to you. So you want to make sure you pick a name that is easy to refer to. You want to pick a name that a website can easily go to something like that. Is it already taken? On a website domain is it already taken on social media platforms is it already being used in your state this is very very important because in most states they require you to do a name search before you start your organization and if there's another organization that's either the same name or too close to your name you may not be able to start the business or incorporate in that state so one of the first things you want to do is just be really clear on what your name is and do that search around in your state to make sure that no other business has that name the other thing you want to do is look and see if the name has been trademarked because if it has been trademarked then you may be approached by that business if you're using that in the marketplace and they may send you a cease and desist letter and say hey stop using our name because the point is you trademark because you don't want your business or whatever you're doing to be confused with someone else so when people are using a trademark name then the consumer may associate whatever your business is doing with that trademark name and that business doesn't want that they want to protect and own their brand and own their name so that same way they have that sense of protection you should around your name too so make sure you fully research the name that you want and make sure it's not being taken one easy thing you can do also is just google the name just put the name in google and see who's using the name and what context and all of that these are some just precautions you just want to do in the early early stages before you get too wed onto a name before you get too committed to a name in case you have to change it. And if you're curious about how you would search a name in your state, I wanted to say this before I went to the next one. Most times you can start with your Secretary of State's office. That is the office that handles typically in the state the business on corporation, managing business, regulation, all that kind of stuff. So start there and then they can help guide you to doing a name search. The second thing you want to do is figure out your business structure. So a nonprofit actually becomes a nonprofit when you set up the business in a state. A lot of people think that you become a nonprofit once you apply to the IRS for tax exempt status, but the reality is you actually become a nonprofit organization when you set up the business and you have to set up the business in a state. So it could be the state that you're headquartered in, you're operating in. It could be a different state for whatever reason you choose. I'm not here to tell you which state to incorporate in. It's easiest to incorporate the state you're operating in, but you may have other reasons why you wanna incorporate in a different state or get set up in a different state. You should just consult a lawyer on that because guess what? I'm not a lawyer and I'm not your lawyer. <laughs> so, but you do wanna know wherever you set up in the state, what kind of structure you want to be. Now, most nonprofits are corporations, but here's the thing, y'all, because you're setting up in different states, what a nonprofit corporation is called in California is different than what's called in Maryland. 
So you really need to do your research at the Secretary of State's office, look at their documentation, and make sure you're clear on the type of business structure you should set up. Because you may not realize there are different types of business structures. There are LLCs, there are C-Corps, there are S-Corps, there are partnerships. There are all kinds of different structures and what they're called and the rules and regulations around them are different from state to state. So you need to understand what's the business structure for your nonprofit. And as I said before, most nonprofits who want to become public charity nonprofits are corporations. And typically there's a specific name for a nonprofit corporation. You're not just creating a for-profit corporation. You have to create a specific nonprofit corporation and the name of that may be different. So in Maryland, it's called a non-stock corporation, but that terminology is not used in every state. So that's why you got to do your research. The other thing you need to realize is there are other types of nonprofits other than just regular public charities. There are associations, there are trusts, right? And so you may want to set up your organization depending on what you want to do as a trust or as an association. And there may be different implications for that in your state. So that's why you got to decide first, okay, what kind of structure am I? And then what is required in my state? So you know the rules and you know the paperwork and the fees and all that you need to fill out. The third thing you really need to do is check your state law. So generally in every state there is state law that speaks to how nonprofits are supposed to operate if you just google nonprofit law and your state name or nonprofit code and your state name i guarantee it will come up most states have all of their legislation and their laws they should have them all online so you can access the laws and the rules so you can know for yourself because here's the thing there are some people who have personalities where it's like, look, I can't handle paperwork. I just know what I want to do. I'm good at programming, but I'm not good at administration. So I'm going to hire somebody to handle it. And I know for those people who feel that way, it's so tempting to just feel like I can just give it to someone and they can take it. But I really, really want you to know what you're doing as well. I really want you to do your research as well and look at the nonprofit laws in your state because they'll speak to how you're supposed to operate. And the truth is, sometimes you may get a consultant or even like an attorney or an accountant who is trying to do your favor but doesn't really understand nonprofit law. So you want to depend on somebody, but sometimes you got to protect yourself as well. So one way to do that is to read the law. Just read it because it will tell you how many people are required to be on a board. It will tell you how long you're able to serve on a board. It'll tell you how many terms. It may tell you details about how to remove board members. There may be requirements on the number of meetings you're supposed to have and the number of people required to be in a meeting to be able to pass rules and pass resolutions. That kind of stuff you need to know. And even if somebody you're consulting with, like an attorney, they may know that, they may not communicate that to you or they may have communicated and it really went over your head because you were trying to get set up. It's really in your best interest for you to know the law in your state and it's really not that hard to find it and just review it. If it's hard for you to do by yourself, make it an exercise for your board where you go through it together just so you're aware. And that kind of goes beyond state law too. It also goes into like state regulations because rules are being passed every year about how businesses are supposed to operate, the fees they're supposed to pay, the paperwork they're supposed to fill out. And even in this last year, the federal government passed a new law that requires businesses to fill out paperwork every year. And if you don't fill out that paperwork by a certain time, you get severely fined. So it's just in your best interest to know the law, to know your regulations for yourself. Don't just rely on someone else because you feel like, oh, I gave them that. They should tell me because nine times out of 10, y'all, they're probably not going to tell you or if they do, it's going to go over your head. So just know for yourself. The fourth thing you need to be mindful of is filing requirements. What is required in terms of receiving documentation? What is required in terms of just filing in general? Because in most states, you have to file an annual report. Well, when is that annual report due? When you are setting up your nonprofit, take note immediately of when your annual report is due because your year is going to go by so fast and then you're going to look back and say, wait a minute, am I supposed to submit something or this might happen? You're going to get a letter in the mail, 
from the Secretary of State's office and it's going to scare the crap out of you because you're going to think you did something wrong. I'm talking from experience, y'all. And you won't realize that you missed an important deadline. So take note when you're starting of the requirements for any kind of paperwork. There are some states that as soon as you start your nonprofit, there's another form you have to file within 30 days or within 90 days, which is another reason why you need to understand your state's specific rules and get comfortable with the Secretary of State's website and the staff there and don't be afraid to call because you may have filing requirements that go over your head. There also may be fees associated with it. And so if you don't pay a fee, you may have to pay a penalty. Now, in most states that I've seen, they don't really charge penalties for nonprofits. They're a little bit more lenient on nonprofits, but you still need to know for yourself. This also comes up with charitable solicitation. If you don't know what that is, I'm linking a video above to give you more insight on that. But this comes up when you have to register to fundraise in your state. There's usually an annual requirement to submit information and you have to submit financial information. So you just need to look at these requirements so you're ready when the time comes and you're not frustrated and frazzled when it's time to submit information to the state. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that in most states you have to set a resident agent and that person is just the person who can receive official and legal correspondence on your behalf. That person always has to be present at that address so at any time information or paperwork can be served or delivered to that person so that they are responsible for getting information and getting notifications from the state all right so if that is required it probably is required in your state make sure you have set a resident agent there are some states that allow you as the founder to be the resident agent the rules are different from state to state so again that's why you got to learn for yourself talk to the secretary of state's office and ask a bunch of questions and the last thing you need to do to prepare for a nonprofit is to gather a board now for some of you watching this you're like I don't want a board, I don't need a board, or you may be surprised that you need a board, but you absolutely do. Now, there are some states that will allow you to set up a nonprofit as one person, right? So when you incorporate, you're not necessarily required to put the names of the board on, on the articles of incorporation because they're asking for incorporators, not necessarily who's on the board. But as you start to grow and do your nonprofit, you absolutely have to report on your paperwork who's on your board. Why is that important? Because you need to realize that as a nonprofit, you are a public entity and it is not your organization as the founder. You don't personally own it. So there has to be a level of checks and balances to make sure that the organization is being responsible with its mission and being responsible with its finances. And so if there's only one person maintaining that, then there are no checks and balances and the government can't rely on you or they can't be sure to rely on you to make sure that there's nothing happening with the money. And this especially is important for the IRS. They just care about the money, y'all. <laughs> they just want to make sure that if you're designated as a tax exempt organization, that the privilege of being that, that you maintain what's required to be a tax exempt organization because you're getting a break by not having to pay income tax. So you not having a board is a red flag. If you're the only person designated on the board, it is a red flag for the IRS that there's nobody really checking to make sure things are going well or the money is being managed well. So you need a board and you need a board from the very beginning. And I'm kind of veering off into like a strategy discussion because having more people on your team will help you grow quicker. You may be like, oh, this is my thing. This is my mission. I'm just going to, you know, get grants and go do my own thing and it'll be fine. And I'm trying to give you a wake up call right now. That is a very closed minded approach and you're not going to grow very fast in that mindset. You do need a board. So from the very beginning, start thinking about at least two other people. If you're going to also serve on the board who can serve along with you, who understand the mission, whose values are aligned with you and who are ready to work and invest their time and their money. Now, some people are watching this and like, well, who would ever do that? Who would work for free or who would commit their time? 
I'm here to tell you people do it all the time, but don't take for granted the people who decide to work alongside you. You still have to engage them. You still have to educate them. You still have to motivate them. Just because someone expresses interest and wants to help you, you still have to do the work as a founder to energize and encourage them along the way. Because if you think you get somebody on the board and then just expect them to just start working, that is not how it works. So you have to invest time to develop a relationship with that person, to encourage them, to motivate them to want to serve alongside you. But the bottom line is, if I would say nothing else in this video, is that you need to invest in finding a strong board. If you need more help with that, I do have some materials available. I'll drop them in the link below. And also I have a startup workbook that helps you chart your first year as a nonprofit. So you need help trying to figure out what's next. That workbook is a really good place to start. So I'm also linking that below. If you need help with your nonprofit, be sure to visit me at bossinabudget.com and I will see you in the next video.